Hi, welcome to Sam's Dream Themes. I am the human being behind the shop, um, Sam. And I'm here to, today, blah, blah, to show you guys how to cut out with the pen tool. Um, shout out to Katie Forshaw at Make Me Magical. She insisted I learn this method because it's a much quicker way um, than using the quick select method of uh, cutting out. And I really like it. It forced me to start using my Wacom tablet. There's lots of tablets out there. I, I just happen to have a Wacom. And uh, yeah, it's quick, it's sharp, it's easy. Um, and so let's get started. I'm saying I'm a lot. This is a problem with recording things, eh? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to the pen tool. And if you hold down your menu here, you're gonna see um, the pen tool at the top. This will let you cut out straight lines. Um, and these are the two that I use, the curvature pen tool, which allows you to cut around curved objects. Because this girl is curved, that this is the one we're gonna select right here. And I'm gonna zoom in and start wherever you want, really. I'll just start right here, actually. And if you want a really close cut, then you should get zoomed in pretty close. And you're just gonna start by tapping the pen. If you're using a mouse, which I don't recommend for this, then you will, um, I think you click as you go along. But you can see that I'm just getting, I don't obsess with, with this. Some people really, if, like if I were doing a face or something, yes, I would be really close to this. But because it's a dress, um, I'm not going to go crazy over it. I'm just going to get as close as I can. If I want it to be more detailed and to stick more in that area, I'll do the lines closer together. And if I mess up and I go too far over, you can just click on the square right there and pull it back over to where you want to place it. And so if you were going too far away, you can fix that right there. But if it's an area, so if it's an area like this, I'm going to go nice and close because I've got lots of little bends and stuff to go through. And sometimes what I like about it is it will just smooth things out for you as you go along. And an area like these right here, I'm going to go really small. And I do have to be careful though, I, won't, I don't want to drag it over too much like that because then I'll end up with kind of a bumpy boot. It's especially not good if you're doing people's faces, you don't want their faces to be bumpy. And some areas I'll just zoom along and um, others I realize, shoot, I shouldn't have zoomed that much. I better go back and fix it. And uh, you can, of course, stop watching me do this and pause and start doing your own like this. And you're going to get really like completely sharp edges. If I were doing an animal, this might not be the best thing to do. Sometimes I'll do it anyway. Oh, here we go. Um, but if I know the object has to be sharp, then this has become my preferred method. So this isn't, as I said, you can use quick select and do it. I mean, there's probably about three or four different ways that you can cut things out in Photoshop. The other thing I'll sometimes do, secret, is at Christmas time when I'll get, you know, like 15, 20 orders at a time and I get completely overwhelmed because I do have a full-time job on top of doing this that I love, I'm a teacher. I 
don't have time to be cutting everything out. So my other secret is I will sometimes hire somebody. There are so many cutout portal services um, that you can look up. I find a lot of them are from India. I'm just going to point out I'm leaving the stray hairs out because I'm actually going to paint some and pull some out later. So I'm not going to worry about those strands right now. But yeah, I've had a lot of success um, with quite a few of them. One of them, not so much success because they quoted me. I had done probably like 40 different orders with them. And then they quoted me this huge amount out of the blue. And I had no, to negotiate with them to change it to the price um, that was originally quoted. But honestly, I felt like all of the ones that I've used have been really professional, really quick. If you want speed, you're going to pay for it. Um, you know, sometimes you'll pay up to $10 for one image, which is insane. I won't really do that. But if you have plans um, ahead of time, you know, maybe you'll end up paying like between two and two fifty dollars American because I'm a Canadian that price is up. So depending on your country, you might pay more. But when I've converted it to American, that's about the price. And if it saves your sanity, then go for it, no shame. So at the end, I'm just connecting them here. And then I can look around and see if there are any glaring issues with it. But there's what it looks like all together. And I'm going to go to layer, vector mask, current path. I'm going to hover over this gray area right here. And I'm going to, um, on Mac, it's control click. I think on a PC, that would be right click. And I'm going to rasticize the, air, the area. Now, it's ready for me to use my... Um, my paintbrush to add or subtract. So when you've um, got a layer mask, which is also available by doing that, when you've got a layer mask, this allows you to add or subtract areas from the background. I'm gonna zoom in, and the first thing I wanna address is this issue right here between your boots. I obviously don't want that. So I'm gonna use a black paintbrush, set, um, for hardness, 100%, so that means it's gonna be nice and clear. 100% right here as well, opacity. And I'm gonna go in, and if you feel more comfortable with a mouse, use a mouse. I still feel like I'm in kindergarten once in a while when I use the pen on my Wacom. It is a learning curve. Um, Katie insisted this was a great way to go and that if I could make myself do this for days and even better weeks that I would never go back to my mouse. I also like this because it's better on my neck and my back. If you edit a lot of photos, you will start getting neck and back issues for sure. And I find that when I use this, I sit up straighter. Um, I use the muscles that I've always had to use every day when using a pen in real life. But at the beginning, it feels like you can't connect your hand and the screen together, and it feels like you're using a pen for the first time. So I've just outlined it with a hard brush, and then I'm going to go in with a bigger brush and make that smaller. If you haven't tried this trick yet, you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to make things larger and smaller as you go along. It's way faster than going up here to do it um, for size. That's what I teach all my students. Get used to using the brackets. Any shortcuts that you can, and I am not a shortcut master at all, but I definitely have my favorites. And um, 
I also like dragging things down with my Wacom pen as well. So there's a button that I click on it and then I get this and I can just drag things up and down. So I really like that. And then I'll usually go around and I'll just double check to see if there's anything as I was cutting out that didn't quite get done. And I will fix that by using my black brush and going along. If this photo were at a distance, I might not be completely crazy about it, but there's a pride thing too. I do like to um, cut things out properly when I can and I'm not rushed. So for this, for the hair, I'll usually change the hardness to zero and I'll just go along and we are going to fix up the hair. Like don't think I'm going to leave her this poor beautiful girl with this, these like spikes around her head, but I will just soften up the edges a little bit. I am rushing here and I am not a pen master. That's okay, because we've got lots of tricks for this hair afterward. Okay, and there we get to the bow, and I want it to be sharp again and hard, so I'm gonna switch the hardness of my brush. And just fix that up. And get rid of those dark areas on the bow. I could probably save myself this grief by doing a better cutout in the first place, but this is gonna happen, especially when I don't wanna bore you by watching me obsess over this. So I'm back at the hair. I'm gonna change the hardness to zero again. Keep your brush kind of small as you do this. Otherwise, if you have a big brush, you're gonna have all this weird halo effect here. So keep your brush pretty small as you do this. You want it to be soft. You don't want it to look like she's kind of like lost her hair. You can do this with animals as well. If you cut out animals, you can do something similar. There are sometimes better ways to cut out animals and I can show you that in a different lesson. If I hit an area like this and I wanna show some transparency, I'll put my brush down to like 22 or 30 and I'll just go in and softly get rid of some of those areas. So like right there, if I wanna show it a little transparent, I can paint in some of those areas, but I will work on fixing that. That right there, I'm bothered that I made that soft, so I'm gonna to switch to a white brush and I can add it back in. I'll go to my hardness. Oops. And I'm adding that back in. So a white brush adds things. Put it here 100%. So the white brush will add back in your stuff and the black brush will take it away. Switch back to my black brush because I'm just gonna tidy up a few more of these areas. And you do just have to plan on that taking a few minutes. Put on some good music as you do this. I'll put on a Netflix show that I kind of care about, but kind of don't, so that I can do this and listen to something in the background at the same time. Just gonna fix up that leg right there. Want it to look like the leg is coming out of the boot. There we 
There we go. And there we go. She is cut out. And she's nice and soft on the hair and the dress is nice and firm and crisp on the edges. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling out some strands of hair now. I'm going to hover over this um, cutout area right here and right click on a PC or control click on a Mac and I'm going to apply the layer mask. And then I'm going to go over to my brushes. Um, actually, I'm going to go to the smudge tool. So it's hiding right under here. You might see it under blur or sharpen. Hold it down until you get the smudge. And on Google, you can type in free hair brushes and download them. And then when you go and you want to change a brush, so normally it would look like this, but I can change my brushes to the hair by going to import brushes and then selecting the brush that I want. So you can see like I've got clouds, grass, hair. So I can click on the hair and click open and it'll show up here. There are lots of different types of hair brushes. I personally like one that's nice and simple like this. I just like one that will pull out some strands for me. So I'm going to make it pretty small. And this is where you really do want a tablet. I've had no success doing this with a mouse. If you can do this with a mouse, I bow down to you. You're amazing. So I'm going to just start going along. And you can do this with animal fur as well. And just start pulling out some of that hair. And you can get those strands without having to obsessively um, Try to go around them. Now sometimes I just don't like what I do there. And I might erase that completely. But yeah, when I do this um, with a mouse, it just looks like extremely fake. I'll sometimes add a few right there and just soften it. And if you don't want wispy hair, then, you know, feel free to skip this part. I just find even a few wisps will definitely give it a more natural look. And sometimes this goes well for me. And sometimes I'll go back and try to fix it up again. But overall, that should just soften it enough. That, yeah, she's just got some nice wispies now without um, going too wild. Oh, my voice, sorry, it's going today. It's been a long day. I should point out, I usually do like to edit um, the photo beforehand. So this has been pre-edited. Um, I did the skin. I did... Um, yeah, I, I sharpened the eyes. I did like a general color balance. I just like to do that before I use this photo anywhere else. It's my personal preference, but you don't have to. You can just cut out something as well um, and go for it. Uh, if you want to learn how to use the select tool to cut out, uh, I will include one of those videos as well in, um, separately so that you can see how that is done if you want to try a different way.